Yo, what's good Spirit Squad? Today, we're not playing Spirits, we're actually going to be playing one of the best decks in all of Modern, and that's going to be Hammer Time. The reason we're so excited to play Hammer Time today is because the deck's gotten a couple of really cool new additions. In addition to the regular Hammer Time stuff, like actual Hammer itself, Stoneforge Mystic, and all the cool stuff that you actually use to auto-equip your big stuff to your creatures, we get a couple of new toys. First is going to be Lion Sash, which is basically scavenging you use on an equipment. You pay a white, you remove a card from a graveyard, and if that card's a permanent, this thing's going to get bigger. Also, that stat line stays the same when you reconfigure slash equip this card to a creature. Also, the reality chip. This thing is going to be a 0-4, which isn't that bad for blocking creatures on its own. But when it's equipped to a creature, you actually get to just play cards off the top of your deck. So this card gets really silly really fast. To help complement cards like the reality chip, we're playing an increased number of zero drops in this build of hammer time. We're playing four ornithopters, three memnites, four copies of Mishra's Bobble, which also just play nice with Luris anyway, but also a copy of Paradise Mantle. So we've got an increased number of zero drops in the deck, and that way you can more readily take advantage of your uh, reality chip. So that's going to be pretty sweet. Here we've got a more complete Urza Saga package too, since we are playing a slight blue splash. We get to play a copy of Aether Spellbomb in the main, which is going to be really nice against opposing Urza Construct tokens, just big ass things that get in your way like Tarmogoyfs, and of course, everybody's favorite creature, Murktide Regent. F that card. So we get to have a lot of real game plan here. Between Paradise Mantle and Springleaf Drum, it's also really easy to turn your creatures into more mana with this build of Hammer Time. We're also going to be playing a one-off copy of Ginger Brute. Honestly, I don't know whether this is going to be like the best creature for this deck, but it's got its utility uses. There's only one in there. What can it hurt, right? But everything else here is going to be basically your normal hammer time fare. You're going to get to play Esper Sentinels, a bunch of zero drops that you can use with your Paradise Mantle or your Spring Leaf Drum, Pure Steel Paladin, and Sigarda's Aid to auto-equip your creatures with your cool stuff the cool stuff that we talked about here in the reality chip in the lion sash and a sideboard that tries its best to adjust to what the format's doing. We're going to be playing a total of three copies of Sanctifier and Vec. This is going to be especially good against decks like Grixis Shadow, but really anything playing black or red removal is not going to appreciate seeing Sanctifier. You're going to be able to put your big ass equipment on your Sanctifiers. Black and red removal doesn't do anything to it. Your opponent's basically just going to sit there with a shoulder shrug. Sucks to be them. We get to play three copies of Prismatic Ending, which are just obviously really good catch-all removal spells. That card does not need an explanation of why it's good. Three copies of Spell Pierce, so we're going to help defend ourselves against things like Hammer... I'm sorry, get, well, kind of against Hammer Time, but we're not side to get in for that. Anyway, the decks that it's actually for are going to be Control decks and other combo decks too. So we're going to see things like Rhinos, like Living End, um, just all kinds of shenanigans. Anything really that we might just have to read, Spell Pierce probably catches those cards too, like most of the things from Belcher. We've got three copies of Thieving Skydiver, and these are going to be because I expect to fight Hammer Time like the mirror. The deck's good, right? So why wouldn't other people be playing it? So you can pay three mana with the kicker on this thing, and you can just like steal your opponent's Colossus Hammer and then use a Pure Steel Paladin to equip it to your stuff. So that's going to be really fun times. And it doesn't necessarily hurt against any of the other Urza Saga decks that are not Hammer Time either. Like you can just take opposing Construct tokens. You can just take all kinds of cool stuff if you have a crap ton of mana against i don't know a non-hammer stone forge mystic deck you can just like take things like their swords of fire and ice and whatnot so that should be really good times to complement the rest of the urza saga package we'll also have one copy of pithing needle and one copy of soul guide lantern in the main um we also have a really good anti-graveyard package which is why we don't mind just one soul guide lantern we are still playing three copies of sanctifier in fact don't forget that so we're gonna have access to three creatures and an easily searchable soul guide lantern and that's honestly good enough against decks like dredge because most of their cards in the graveyard are red or black anyway it's gonna help against things Things like the oops all spells deck because most of the things that they want to make use of like salvage titan are red and or black so we've got a lot of really good uses out of this card and of course an easily searchable soul guide lantern is going to be so good and then pithing needle is just like good against stuff right like it's good against goblin charbelcher it's good against planeswalkers of all kinds and of course 
in the mirror, it's not even bad. So we've got a lot of use for pithing needle if you want it. But that's going to be our deck list for today. Easy peasy. And I'll see y'all in round one. All right, we're going into round one. We're on the draw. Let's reveal the best card in modern and see what our opening hand looks like. Uh, I'm here for this, actually. So I get to play Ink Moth Nexus, Spring Leaf Drum, Ornithopter, tap these two, play Esper Sentinel, and then going from there, all I need is a Pierce Steel Paladin or a Sigarda's Aid to make this Colossus Hammer really good. I don't hate this, and then Ursa Saga to back it all up. So yeah, got a keeper. And let's see what our lovely opponent's looking to do. Planes, and looks like this is possibly a mirror match. Got it. Noted. Okay. So we're still going to do the thing. We are going to let them draw the card. They can have the thing. Not the biggest fan of them doing that, but I, well, didn't win the die roll. So we are stuck paying the troll toll. Hmm. And I think this is one of those matchups where... Oh, so many one drops. Okay. So we are going to, I think, just play Saga. And I don't hate the idea of playing this, paying the troll toll, and then keeping up my... Oh, whoops. I wanted to pay that once. There. So now if they try to do something crazy, I can bounce one of their creatures. Um, but I think I would actually just rather cast another creature here. Because they, they don't have a Sigarda's Aid. They likely don't have a copy of Pure Steel Paladin. Well, I mean, maybe they do. They could have Land Paladin something. But I don't think I win this on the draw just being, like, really passive, you know? Alright, so they do have the Pure Steel. So this is going to suck if we just catch the bad end of some shenanigans. So... I am going to get to draw a couple of cards, which is nice. Uh, that's a hammer. Did we just win, right? Land, Spring Leaf, plays Pure Steel Paladin. This equips Ink Moth Nexus, and then... Oh, no, no, no. Ornithopter's in the way. I need one more point of mana before I can bounce it. Never mind. I can't get rid of this yet. So here... I don't think I should be just taking damage. I'm just going to do this. I don't really need to be taking damage for no reason i think <laughs> i do enjoy it when they do that all right let's untap okay so do i have a win i think the answer is still no um so yes i want to pay to life for that i want to play the memnite so let's think i do want to play the paladin still i want to tap that instead um and it's not like this thing has flash, so I still need to make a choice as to what I do with it now. So how do I avoid losing to Ink Moth Nexus? I can put Colossus Hammer on Memonite and just play defense? Is that really the best thing to be doing here? Might actually be the best thing to be doing here. And I am going to... Oh, you know what? I can draw a Paradise Mantle. So I'm actually not going to do this. Dang it. Okay. Um, so let's equip for zero, I guess, here, right? Like if they attack with Esper Sentinel on this, then they got to pay. And it's not like I have anything better to do with that. So I might as well just... And the Ornithopter has to sit on defense because I don't want Ink Moth Nexus to be able to kill me. But can't really do too much with that. So Memnite is on chump block duty for Esper Sentinel. Ornithopter is going to be on chump block duty against Ink Moth Nexus. And other than that, I think I'm still relatively okay-ish. I would prefer to have an instant speed way to equip this thing. Um, like a cigar to Zade would be pretty much perfect. But if I'm not going to have that, then let's see what the next best thing ends up being. Okay, we are casting a Colossus Hammer. Okay, so are you going to let me draw my card? No, they did pay the troll toll. Okay. And so they're also working with more cards than I am currently, which is uh, pretty scary, not going to lie. But we do also have access to an Ink Moth Nexus that's currently looking all right in size. So let's see where this really goes. If they attack with both of these, I'll be relatively happy to just block the Esper Sentinel with my 12-12. But if they attack Pure Steel to Pure Steel, then I think I just jump here. Okay, that's fine, because I don't mind just jumping them with the Memnite. Jump in front. Thank you for your service. So now if they go ahead and just like slide some stuff over, then we'll see what we can kind of come up with. Okay. And okay. All right. So they're looking to just draw a mega shit ton of cards if I end up like having the thing here. So they have Ornithopter and they can tap an Esper Sentinel to um, put a plus on the Ink Moth Nexus. They can um, animate that. So here, do I want to make a token? Do I want mana? I think I just want to make a token. And I think Shadow Spear is actually going to be the play here. So I get to draw the card for that. Yes, please and thank you. Oh, that's nice. All right. Um, yeah, I guess we take those. Let's go ahead and play that. And I get to hammer. They are going to draw a bunch of cards, which is annoying, but I don't have 22 mana. So there's that. Um, but I do get to draw another card. What do we have? 
yes i would always like to draw cards stoneforge mystic uh nothing i want to do with that so i can just kind of ball out on my esper sentinel here i like that because if i do it like this then i can go ahead and use one of my creatures with the spring lift drum and the spell bomb to bounce something and i'll go up to a metric shit ton of life and as long as i don't lose to ink moth next six exactly i think i'm okay so let's give ourselves the chance to do that and this is now do i even want to let them have the double block i actually am okay with letting them have the double block i think i would rather just keep my aether spell bomb and i'll take the two for one on creatures because i'm gonna go up to 40 whole life which is approximately a shit ton and as long as i don't mess around and like find a way to die to um ink moth nexus then i think i'm okay here so let's give myself the chance to do that and then equip here so now that i still have my spell bomb on a table with this setup i think i'm relatively safe from most things um Sigarda's aid throws a little bit of a wrench in that but i don't think they have like a great attack here even if they attack with both Colossus Hammers, I think I actually just take the attack because I'm at 40. So that's not really something I think I need to worry too much about. We got to do a lot more of the thing currently than they're doing. And then next turn also, if it turns out they want to... And like this is fine because I'm definitely just going to with the Ornithopter. Right, no trample. Yeah, no trample. Okay that's always good and i'm gonna be able to do a lot of the same thing right like i'm gonna get to equip this and then reactivate like they did to re-give it flying and when that's all said and done i'll be able to cigar to aid Ooh, that's a little scary because now they can oh never mind i was gonna say oh no they still can they still can they have a spring leaf drum they're doing it all now well gg opponent so that worked out pretty well for us well that's gonna lose flying so that doesn't help so you can diversify your bonds all you want but as long as you're not able to defend against the Ink Moth Nexus, that's really all I want out of life. I can activate here, reactivate so that it's flying again. And yeah, they know they can't do anything about that. Sick. So against the mirror, we've actually got a lot of stuff. I've got three copies of the Thieving Skydiver that we talked about. I've got three prismatic endings and things that I don't really want. Like I don't really want the Lion Sashes. That's kind of meh. Um, Esper Sentinel's okay i think that's it i think it's just like okay and we don't really need the jellyfish here the jellyfish is pretty good and this is a match that as we saw has the ability to go longer but i think i'd just rather have like any of my other stuff so that's gonna be my setup against the mirror here so we want minus sentinels minus reality chip minus lion slash plus prismatic endings and plus a bunch of skydivers so let's do that take out the cards we don't want and submit Yep, okay. Just had to do a real quick confirm. So hopefully these Skydivers are anywhere near as good as they look in this matchup because, like, I haven't actually played them in Hammer before. Uh, it's a turn. This is really good. I do need another land, but I am on the draw. But Sigarda's Aid Ornithopter is just so good. I'm going to keep this. It's not just an instant win because I don't have... Oh, well, there's a land. So it's still not just an instant win, though. It just happens to be really good. So I'm going to get Plane, Sigarda's Aid, Ornithopter, and at least now I am threatening a win. I do need another Hammer if I want to be able to instant win, but, like, this doesn't suck. And they don't have a creature, so they're kind of really freaking scared of what i'm able to do right now which is good because i want them to be really freaking scared even more than that i would like to just draw a hammer so let's see if we can just draw a hammer and not even uh that's not bad that's like next best thing right i can ginger brew hammer oh what the hell am i doing i have a stoneforge mystic i can stoneforge mystic look for hammer next turn ginger brew double hammer oh no i need one more mana to make that like really absurd as it stands it's only like pretty good so how do i do this without a fourth mana i think i might be trying to just be too aggressive with this yeah i may be just playing it too aggressive i think i'm just gonna stoneforge mystic and get another hammer <laughs> there because like i have an ink moth nexus so i don't really need to be playing this ultra aggressive i can just threaten the lethal that i have right now like that instead of trying to get cute with ginger brute rights or anything like that um i am also threatening ornithopter lethal so like that's cool too so let's see what they can do to get out of this if they don't have a flyer then they do just kind of like die on the spot which is nice um so i'm gonna block with my stoneforge mystic and then see if they want to like 
put in a hammer or something else beforehand. Looks like they do. Obviously fine by me. And what do you have in main phase two? Do you have anything to block against my Inkmoth Nexus? I mean, I clearly hope the answer is no. Saga, okay. And seal of cleansing on... Oh, duh, you don't have to choose yet. That takes out the immediate danger of the the uh, Inkmoth Nexus kill. So it does solve that problem. It doesn't solve the other 45 things I'm able to do. So that's kind of nice. So I guess what I want to do here is actually start with the Ginger Brute. Um, I'm actually going to leave that back. I'll just do this. And then I will play one of the hammers. And then this way, if they want to like kill the Ginger Brute with the Seal of Cleansing, then that leaves me with another clear-ish route for the Colossus Hammer next turn. And then I can just play the other Sigarda's Aid this turn too, in case of they are killing Sigarda's Aid. Okay, sure. Mm, I have the fourth land. Do I want to do Sigarda's Aid right now? I can do Sigarda's Aid, save my mana, but be more weak to a Prismatic Ending or... No, 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 no. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play for the mana. So this is still relatively scary, especially if they decide to just like look for a Pithing Needle and Pithing Needle at Ink Moth Nexus, then I'm a lot less likely to be able to do the thing. Yeah, this is a draw where like a Springleaf Drum would have been really good, but they have a Shadow Spear. Okay. I am really, really scared of another Colossus Hammer here. Oh, fuck. F. All right. Um, <laughs> all right. That sucks. You got me. Uh, yeah. Game three. Let's go ahead and try again. This time we get to be on the play though. So that's pretty exciting. Like we've got prismatic endings. We've got thieving skydivers. So I am looking forward to the prospect of being able to kill them. So let's hope that all the pew pew stuff actually gets to do the pew pew thing. Oh, also, I don't know if I've told anybody like, and I'm pretty sure I mentioned it on stream, but that, that was a while ago. So I happen to be lactose intolerant. And I went to my local grocery store, Wegmans, and I already like basically everything blueberry, but I found cashew milk yogurt. Like that's a thing that exists in the world. So I've got blueberry cashew milk yogurt and that's, this isn't bad. So I've got a crap ton of zero drops, an ink moth nexus, um, a saga and a cigar to Zade. So yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to keep it. And is this a hand where I want to turn one saga to look for the like what saga here? Or do I want to turn one nexus? No, I think I'm just going to turn one cigar to Zade. Like I got a bunch of shit here. All right. And then let's see what they have in their upkeep. They're going to see a thought seize. Joke's on you. I don't have any cards in my hand. Um, <laughs> please cast thought seize. That's not a thought seize. That's not a thought sees. That's a thought sees. <laughs> Jokes on you, my hand's trash. <laughs> oh no, it's worse. <laughs> That's what I get. <laughs> all right, all right. Um, so I guess I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, play my friend Ursa Saga then. <laughs> oh that's so bad like i had two draw steps to draw not land deck why are you like this that's what i get for doing a maniacal laugh it knew it just knew the entire time there was never any doubt in the deck's mind such a jerk sometimes all right so what do we got going on here we have a stoneforge mystic can't really do much about that so i'm actually just gonna press six and then wait for them to select their hammer and then untap and cry about it okay and here i think i actually just play the ink moth nexus this turn yeah duh all right still nothing here i almost hope you cast another thought seize opponent that'd be really funny um because i'm uh not doing anything with that okay so we got a saga there's a cigar to aid i don't like that what i do like is the iganjo so what happens here they attack i do a block and after i declare a block they can go ahead and cast a thing and then i can actually iganjo against that so yeah yeah so let's try that oh man please get them um oh er, i should actually wait for them to do the thing and declare where target it's going to okay now i want to do it oh my god please don't have another hammer i want this to be really funny Woo! legendary lands let's go <laughs> all right neon kamigawa cards you have done the thing um <laughs> I am having a good time. Um, so here, do... Oh, wait, that was a Shadow Spear. Does Ink Moth Nexus just win? No, that's only Poison 9, Andre. Duh, I swear I can count. So in that case, I'm just going to make a token, right? Yeah, I'm just going to make a token. So I'm, I'm still going to get a hammer, though. Um, and I'm going to put this onto one of these. Yeah, it loses flying, whatever. Um, yes, I would like to use the ability, please. Put this in untapped. 
and turn my friend sideways. Mm, I actually don't know that I want to gate in Shadow Spear. I think I just let this chill. Is there a reason to let that chill? No, I'm just going to gate in Shadow Spear. It's not an instant W, but it's not bad. They don't have an Ink Moths next, so being at 30 something is going to be good. Is this a path to exile? Jesus Christ, in 2022? All right, well, that's happening. Uh, good thing we got basic lands to put in. I don't know how I feel about that. Correction, I do know how I feel about it. Don't like it. So we're tapped out, so I'm just going to go ahead and press six here and wait for our opponents to just kind of come at us with some more stuff, I guess. Hmm. I mean, I can't really be mad about them having a path to exile. I got to use Igonjo, so can't really talk too much shit. I'm going to, just can't. Oh, a pure steel paladin. Oh, look at us just having everything. Well, that's awfully nice. Let's, uh, yeah, fuck it. I guess go for some gusto. Um, they're at 17. So I'm going to do it like this because the possibility of them having something to defend themselves with is uh, pretty high. So I'm going to buy lures with the mana. So let's just put a big old threat on their life total and see what happens here. That's a good start. And uh, since nobody blocked, I can do this somewhat safely. Oh, you know what I should do? You know what I should do? I'm actually going to do this. A no, I'm good with this. I'm good with this. Let's un. So they get to make a construct. Okay. And what do you look for, opponent? Just another hammer? Without access to a ink moth nexus, I think I'm still pretty confident in my hammers. Or, sorry. In my nexus ability to just be a good alternate win route here, I think. Okay, so they do have a shadow spear of their own, which is fine. As long as they're not able to straight up. Um, oh, did this like... So now their hammer is going to get to make that a 15. And yours is bigger than mine. Do not like. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a fan. Not a mighty good fan. All right. So here I would go to 20. They go to 17, which is unfortunately more than what I have now. But if I draw another hammer or something here, then my Ink Moth Nexus is just good. Uh, that's fine. Honestly, this part I don't really care about. I'm okay with that. So let's see what I can draw here. A flooded strand. I don't think that does anything for me. So I'm going to cast my Luris. Luris can recast my bauble. We can equip here. We can equip here. And 16 is bigger than 12. So I'm going to just play a land. And the cool thing here is that if they, for some stupid reason, choose to not block, then I'll be able to animate Ink Muff Nexus for a 17th point of damage here. Are you fucking serious? Uh, okay. I, I'm sorry, opponent. I didn't mean to call you stupid. <laughs> I feel so bad for saying that now. Um, <laughs> whoops. <laughs> oh, I feel like a jerk. All right, I'm just going to close this window now. Next round. All right, round two on the play versus McWinsauce, which means I have absolutely no idea what's happening as far as a matchup goes. They play a little bit of everything. So let's see what actually happens when we get to draw our opener here. And our opener is, uh, yeah, this ain't it, Chief. All right, let's uh, ship this. And this is much better. So we actually have a second land. We've got three pure steel paladins, so I don't mind pitching one of these. And I've got like a sweet ornithopter starter here and can just kind of go from this. So let's see what our opponents cook in here. I don't think I want to play the hammer out. That could be wrong. Like they could just like thought seize my hammer and then I can be sad about that. But let's see what actually happens. It's a gilded goose. Oh man, are we looking at some miscellaneous like sacrifice nonsense? That'd be kind of cool. So let's do this, do this, do this, pass a turn. And now next turn, if I draw a land, I can play pure still and draw two cards off with a Colossus Hammer, so that'd be pretty sweet. And even if I can't, next turn I can still get Metalcraft. So assuming they don't Thought Seize me here, I'm pretty happy about that. And if they do Thought Seize me, I don't even know that I'm really sad about getting to play a second Pure Still Paladin, you know? Trail of Crumbs. So it looks like we are looking at some Sacrifice nonsense. That's kind of cool. So what? Oh, fine. So it looks like I'm not going to get to go full Insano here, but I will still get to... I guess do this and this isn't that bad because what happens here is i will get to that's not bad either equip here to test and see if they have like a fatal push or something looks like no still medium sad about not having actually drawn um off of something else here i'm sorry draw like you know um this land beforehand so that we could draw another card off of the second pure still here but i'm not gonna be sad about this so let's make you hard to block and we can 
start getting some attacks in. Cool thing about this being a 0-2 is that my pure steel is not exactly scared of attacking. And since I got to untap with this pure steel, I'm pretty confident there's like no removal spell. So they go all the way down to three and uh, yeah, let's see what we get here. Okay, looks like they're just looking for something to draw off of this. And if it's like a mayhem devil now, it might be a little too late. Uh, oh wait, they can't. They're playing Luris. Never mind. They cannot have Mayhem Devil. Okay, they can make Constructs. Not terribly concerned about that. Sick life. They are playing Jund flavored nonsense here. Hey, where did that Sanctifier go? Didn't I just have a third one in here? Against this deck, I do want these things. I actually think I want the Skydivers because this deck plays all kinds of stuff. Like they play Witch's Oven. They play like food tokens and things. I don't know that food tokens relevant. Mm, nah, I lied. I'll just take this. Yeah, I think that's good enough. So they're going to try to run me out of resources as, I guess, like a primary win condition here. Did I put Pending Neal in? Yes, I did. Okay, it's right here. Cards that are embarrassing. Ginger Brute's not great. Spell Bomb is pretty embarrassing against a deck that actively uses ETBs. Um, I don't know that I really want, like, Mib Knights here. And that leaves me with, what, two more cards to cut? I do want Lion Slash, but I... Actually, I want this too. The jellyfish can come out. And is it really just two stone forges? Because I actively want the Esper Sentinels. I want the Cigar Disades and stuff. And Lion Sash is actually not bad against this deck because it can just remove cats from um, graveyards. So I, I actually do think it's just two stone forge mystics. And I'm going to do this with just like a much slower plan here. Or I could keep the stone forge mystics and get rid of baubles. That's probably a little better. Yeah, I think that's a little better. All right. I don't, yeah, I don't really want to be getting rid of Stoneforge Mystics in almost any matchup. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll say versus food dot deck here. So we don't want Ginger Brew, Spell Bomb, Mem Knights, Reality Chip, Bobble. We do want Sanctifiers, Lanterns, and Prismatic Endings. And that's kind of a lot here, but we are going with a pretty, I guess, robust plan against what we expect this deck to look like. So let's take out these things, submit these things. And of course, I have a feeling that the Sanctifiers hopefully are pretty good. Like, I don't really want to deal with the whole cat oven nonsense. So we have a lot of ways to deal with that. Like we've got Lion Sash, we've got Soul Guide Lantern that we can get off of the... Is my screen blinking? Why is my screen blinking? I'm gonna have to double check this afterwards, but I don't know whether that's just OBS being weird or whether something else is actually happening here. Uh, I don't hate this though. So I've got a fetch land to use with my bobble. I've got two sanctifiers and a lion sash, so good luck doing graveyard things. Um, so I'm honestly fairly happy to keep this. And even if we get like thought seized out of the way here, I think I'm still pretty much okay, but I am... Yeah, I'm hoping that my screen isn't like blinking out as much as I think it is, but it looks like it totally is. So what's happening here? Okay. A thopter is actually not even bad. So I can do this. I can do this. Bobble, and then Bobble's going to get to target myself because I want to know whether I want to draw that card or not. And it's going to be a Colossus Hammer. I actually don't want to draw that yet because, well, what am I doing with it? So I'm actually just going to put this Hallowed Fountain into play right now and then draw something fresh. Hopefully like a Prismatic and then get rid of this squirrel. Saga's not bad. So yeah, I'm definitely not blocking that. Like, you got it, homie. So let's see what their main phase two contains. This is a Alpine Moon. Okay, so I assume you're going to name my Urza Saga, which of course I do have one, but we can untap and then... Uh, come on, man. Um... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I guess I'm going to play Lion Sash then. Um, still mad. What do you cost to equip? Two? Yeah. Oh, upsetting. <laughs> All right, goodbye, Lion Sash. You got me. So let's... Okay, I guess I am now sad about... Uh, are you the one that's new? So let's take our two here and... Oh, so I'm actually just going to grab this for the sake of conserving my life total, but I'll be pretty happy to just do this. And if our opponent's going to keep a one lander, I don't even know that I necessarily mind if they want to um, use a fatal push on my ink moth nexus. I'm actually kind of okay with that. Okay, and it looks like it's not even there, so they'll just continue to take poison. And honestly, since my sanctifier is going to be able to hold shit down pretty well, uh, opponents? Opponents. Damn. I'm like, there's no way that can be good. Well, 
there goes one of our um, sanctifiers, so that sucks. So if I can draw a prismatic ending, then I can get rid of this Alpine Moon, and my two Urza Sagas in my hand look pretty good. Um, I can also just, like, start buying um, Luris too, so that's pretty sweet, but I do need to draw another land if I want to put both that and have Sanctifier. So let's... Or we just win. Or we just win. That works too. Um, <laughs> easy peasy beautiful. Never didn't have it. Next round. All right, so we... Aw, oh, man. Um, this hand is really good, except for the fact that it doesn't do anything. <laughs> All right, let's get rid of this. Um, that's much, 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 much better. So I'll be pretty happy to do this and ship this. And if at any point I end up drawing myself into a hammer or... I've got a lot of live draws. Like a white land lets me cast this. A hammer is immediately great. A thought seize is immediately not. You know the drill. Um, so we're going to get Thought Seized. And I guess we say goodnight, Prince, to what? Our Pure Steel Paladin, the Cigardazade. They almost serve the same function for us. I would like to see a hammer anyway. Let's see, let's see what happens. I assume they're going to get rid of this because I have the Inkmoth Nexus, but to be determined, I guess. Still got a lot of cool things and stuff. Mulligan against this deck seems pretty poor too, so looks like this is going to be the second time in a row fighting Jund. And Jund is pretty obnoxious. They did get rid of Cigardizade, so we'll just be able to kind of take this slowly and then see what happens. I would like Pure Seal Paladin to actually be able to, like, you know, make it a whole turn and do stuff though. Oh, another Bobble. I don't hate that. Um, I want to draw. What, a Cigardizade? Nah. A white land. I want to draw a white land so I can play Pure Steel Paladin. So I'm going to play this first in case I draw another white land. If I play the Ink Moth Nexus first, then that immediately takes me off of being able to see a um, another white source guaranteed. Well, it looks like I'm not going to see Pure Steel either, but you know, it's what it is. So we're going to get that Thought Seized out of our hand, and I'm still pretty okay here because at least their first couple of turns is effectively not doing too much of anything. If this is going to be like a Rags or a Darcy and then Thought Seized, then yeah, I'm a little sadder. I'm still mostly okay with what's happening here. It's slow going for sure, but whoa, breeding pool. We're on some five color nonsense. All right, Drown in the Lock. Noted, I have looked at the cards. So what do we got here? This isn't bad. So I can... I have drawn in a lock here, and they have thought seas. So what I can do is start off with Springleaf Drum either way, and I can turn a Springleaf Drum into either a copy of Pure Steel Paladin or a Stoneforge Mystic, and then let them discard the other. I think I want because like they have the drawn in the lock anyway. So with a third land, assuming it's black, they'll be able to cast both Thoughtseize and Drawn in the Lock. So really my job here is to decide what do I want more? Do I want Stoneforge Mystic so that they can kill Stoneforge and use the Drawn in the Lock to kill it? Or do I just go Springleaf Drum, Pure Steel Palette, and have them thought seize this? And I think the answer is that I want to play Stoneforge Mystic, let them discard the the hammer and try to maybe kill this or to kill the Stoneforge. And that sets me up a little longer, or sorry, a little better, I believe, for a longer game. So, because that's that's what this is going to be. Like, we're going to have, at least for hammer time, a bit of a longer game here. So let's do that there. So now this way, yeah, sure, they're still going to be able to discard something out of my hand. And they're still going to be able to kill one of my threats. But at least this way, they're not getting all of the value out of my hand. And I still got to like get an additional card with my Stoneforge. So I'm going to take this, go down to 16. We're going to get Thought Seized. If they don't have a black land, then they can't cast both of these. So I'm happy with that too. But honestly, I uh, we'll see what happens. Okay. Expressive Iteration. That's not a black land, y'all. It can get a black land. It got a black land, but it's not a black land itself. So if they're just going to cast a Thought Seize and get rid of Hammer out of my hand here, then I'm still relatively okay with that. Like, I still have a Paladin. I still have a Colossus Hammer. Okay, I don't have a Paladin, um, but I did. I had a Paladin before. I liked it. It was nice. Um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and play my Ink Moth Nexus here. And I don't even think I want to cast this Hammer. No, I'm going to cast the Hammer. So I'm going to do this, tap this, play this, and... I can still make a construct and then start threatening some really nice attacks back. Uh, and then if they thought sees me here, like, then I'll be pretty happy to only have a flooded strand in hand so we can, you know, kind of get them again. That'd be kind of cool. Not a bad choice in swamp either. I do like that swamp. Oh, you know, I got to get those IRL. 
Um, so I don't have my copies of the the really, really silly. Is this Renin 6? It is Renin 6, and you can't kill either of these, so you just get a land back. Sure, you got it. Um, so I'll be pretty happy to just have access to the sweet full art Japanese lands, because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna buy those. Because I don't know whether I would just want like a giant brick of them for pioneer spirits. If I build this, do I just want basics for this because i don't like to do the thing where i'm sharing cards across decks right like i already have all of the cool stuff for modern spirits but i uh don't really want to share cards between decks so i'm just not going to do that so here they are going to end up having to use their drawn on the lock on this which i certainly don't mind um but i am going to make a token here and like i said they can draw on the lock here but i'm actually pretty okay with that oh why am i doing that now so I get to go looking for a thing. They get to kill this with drawn in a lock and I'm okay with that. So I have a ton of options. We can get shadow spear. I can just get a hammer. I can get a spell bomb. I think I like getting the spell bomb and really fucking up their clock here. Cause now they're going to have to recast the uh, Tarmogoyf and I'm still going to get to play my land and play Esper Sentinel too, because I have the spring leaf drum. So yeah, we're going to just do all of that. And yeah, they're still going to get to, um, yeah, look, look at these things. Like, I'm so hyped to have those IRA. Uh, so now they got to like respond to this with the drawn and lock, which like, it's not like I really had a window to do it for free, but it's still a thing that I have access to. All right. So I'm going to tap blue, tap this one that they're looking to kill, bounce your timer, Goyf, and then I can resolve this and there so like not necessarily the best of times here but they have to take a whole turn off on this if they want to tick down and kill this i can rebuy luris this turn like there's a lot of stuff that i can do i am not necessarily the happiest about not having a way to like you know auto equip this and do the thing but i can still like yeah buy luris this next turn i have decent attacks or at least access to them with another artifact in play this can be bigger than their tarmogoyf is so like there's a lot of stuff to do here so let's see what kind of stuff i'll have access to i still feel like making them waste a whole nother turn on that tarmogoyf is probably better than keeping it in play here and i've got a lot of really good live draws here too all right so there's a goyf it's a large large six seven is pretty big there's rags luckily that thing doesn't really have text right now but let's see another ink moth nexus not the best. Um, so I guess I play this. The new one is going to get tapped to animate the one that already existed. And this can't overwhelm Goyf. So I'm just going to attack Renin 6 for the one. And if this is a fatal push, then honestly, so be it. I was never doing anything about that anyway. So I wish I could take that down, but it is just going to go to one. And then I can this by our friend Luris. That's their Luris zone. I want my Luris. This is pretty good for us too. Um, assuming Luris doesn't actually get killed here, what I can do is go ahead and cast Luris, rebribe Pure Steel Paladin, and then start beating down with the Colossus Hammer I have in play. But it looks like it's getting thought seized. Okay, so that stinks, but we still have a pretty good line here if we just like draw a, um, a Pure Steel Paladin off the top to equip this hammer. A Stoneforge Mystic doesn't hurt. It's not the best, but it doesn't hurt. Um... So I guess I will just do this. Oh, you know what? I could have gotten, I guess, Reality Chip. That might have been nice. Oh, I could also have gotten Lion Sash. Shit, now I really feel bad about tapping like this. Whoops. That is a thing we have done in today's life. I guess we fucked up. Are you killing this Stoneforge Mystic in response so that I can't activate? I mean, that is a good plan. I'm just wondering if that's what they're doing. That's a lot of basic colors, too. They are Snapcaster. Snapcaster Drown in the Lock to counter my Stoneforge? Okay. I mean, that's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Looks like that's exactly what's happening here. Okay, not much I'm doing about that. So here, I think I just fire up and get ready to make an attempt on Renin Six's life again. I still want to be able to keep this thing somewhat under control. And I don't have access to being able to kill it yet. It's not nothing. So if I do all of that and it turns out they have another one, then, you know, F in a chat, etc., etc. But at least for now, we're able to mostly keep it like in check. Like it's still able to rinse and reuse the fetch lands every turn. And that's pretty obnoxious. So far, I think we're okay-ish. They have their lures, which is pretty bad times for us. So now they can just like buy it and cast it with basically any land drop. So that sucks. But there was never really anything I could do about that. So again, it's kind of what it is. So they can just, like I said, get literally any land, immediately get the Luris. Um, So if they cast Luris, cast Bobble, right? Then this actually opens me up to a pretty decent W. I just need to draw Pure Steel Paladin so I can reanimate the Wom um, one of these Renin Sixes. 
or not reanimate, so I can animate. Uh, so if I draw a pure seal paladin, I will be really excited about that. So, okay, so they're not even going to bother with that. So let's draw a pure steel paladin. Mm, that doesn't really look like a pure steel paladin deck. All right, well, I guess I just clear Renin 6 and then cry about it. Man, that was my window. So here, I don't think I'm going to have another clear and open window to being able to do this. But at least if I do it like this, then they have to choose between reanimating Renin 6 with um, Luris and like, you know, just doing something more productive. And I currently don't know that I'm going to get to do anything more productive. So, so let's see things I can do. I can, of course, just like block all of their stuff currently, which is nice. Minus exactly the Tarmogoyf. Blocking Tarmogoyf is not exactly a route that's going to be really on. Um, but I can take six, go to four. The other three creatures are really well held back by this construct token. If I get a couple more artifacts in play, then the construct token can be pretty large. But like, realistically, I need to... I, sh I needed to win this game faster, but that didn't happen. So just kind of thinking about what else I do have for things. And they've got four cards in hand. So that's a lot of removal spells they have access to. And there's just things of like so many different colors out too. So I don't necessarily know that post board, a Sanctifier in Vec, for example, is really going to be what solves all of the problems here. Oh, are we also Death Shadow? I feel like we're also Death Shadow. What are you casting? Oh, <laughs> all right. All right, we're just doing everything. Got it. Just full on casting tip alt here. So are you going to minus on my construct? Are you going to plus and just like rip me off here? You're going to plus and try to rip me off here. What'd you get? You got my reality chip. Oh man, that was one of the cards I wanted. What'd you get of yours? Another drown on the lock. Yikes. Okay. So a pure steel paladin is still a live draw. Considering everything that's happening here is pretty sick. Um, I cannot turn my construct into a seven, so I am just going to take this and go to four. So give me a pure still. Give me a pure still. Um, <laughs> unfortunate. All right. So I'm going to put that into play tap and there's nothing I'm doing about tip all. So basically, oh, and we see that they have another drown in a lock now too. Um, I'm going to tap out this game. There's no way I'm winning. Uh, let's get out of this. So they're just doing everything, which... Not much I can do anything about. So let's put in just prismatic endings and sanctifiers because all we've seen so far is non-white mana and we've seen that they are playing just like a bunch of black and red removal spells. So I think sanctifiers are actually going to be kind of live and I do like prismatic again ending against rags and all their other threats. So that's how we're going to board here. And again, mem knights are like a little medium. I don't think they're bad. I don't think they're great. And I don't know that Lion Sash has much text here. Like, it's a good card, but I don't think the graveyard matters against this deck. So let's do this. There, I'm going to call it Four Color Zoomer Pile because that's pretty much what's happening here. Minus Memnites, Ginger Brute. And I think I like this setup against like this random Zoomer Pile. I don't know that it's worth keeping Memnite in, even though it can block Rags just fine. I think I like doing this a little better. Because if like, if Rag hits my deck once, it is annoying since they'll be up on mana, but... I still think I'm mostly okay with it. And of course, I still have like 100 things I can cast for low to zero man. So yes, we'll go first. Let's reveal our friendo and see just how bad we can duff them in. I would like to really duff them in. Um, I actually kind of like this. Like a turn one Esper Sentinel is really good here. Uh, turn two Sanctifier turns off most of the lines they can have access to with um, whatever that card's called, Ragavan. So that's pretty good. And I even like the fact that I don't have to take damage because I've got more white sources here. So I can just kind of like chill here and hope that this is pretty good. And for the most part, I think it is. So pretty happy about this. I don't know that I want to do that. So here I'm just going to go ahead, attack for one in play, Sanctifier. And if they want to kill this with like a bolt or something like that, then whatever, fine. You can pay the troll toll. So far, so good. And I even like this uh, Sanctifier being the play here against like, you know, ELT, Lightning Bolt, Untap, Run in Six. Um, cause Sanctifier can still threaten Ren and Six and stuff pretty good. So, so far I'm okay. If they untap and have like a Pyrite spell bomb, then whatever you got me. I think so far this is a, uh, a pretty good opener. Not exactly sad about this opener. So starting next turn, what do I want to ideally do here? Um, I can play Saga, cast another Sanctifier, and know that this is probably better than most of the offensive part of their plan. Unholy Heat. Okay, sure, you can pay to Troll Toll and get rid of that. Still medium sad that they didn't just like let me draw my card, you know? But for what it is, I'll shut up and take it. So let's attack you. 
And then in the second main phase, I don't mind just casting the second Sanctifier and hopefully I can make their day as miserable as possible, you know? Kind of the entire plan here. Just if we have a miserable opponent, currently we are sitting in the misery seat. Play a Goyf and it's immediately at 3-4. Okay, so there goes my Urza Saga. Cried about it. Congrats on your land destruction. I mean, admittedly, I actually am a little sad about it because I wanted to at least have some kind of long-term plan here. But that's kind of to be expected from anything playing red and most things playing Lurus. So what's this? A thought sees on my pure steel paladin. Damn, I was using that. I mean, I wasn't actually, but... Oh, man! No, I actually did want it. Well, I'm not going to cast Hammer with this, but I can go ahead and grab a land and then just bring back my friend Lurus here. So I'll do this in Bayou now, get my attack for four in, and then see what's good from here. And they did see Iganjo, which is a little bit of a sad face, but all things considered, I think I'm still like fairly okay with this. So if they don't discard my Lurus, then hopefully I can just like, you know, cast it, bring back S% and they'll untap, go from there. Uh, this is not counterspell mana anymore, at least not in the form of Drown in the Lock, but if they actually have like just straight up counterspell, then I am sad about that. What's this? Not Urza Saga. Okay. At least it was not an Urza Saga. So I can do this and I can go ahead and get back my other basic planes. So I am out of basic planes now, but I can do this immediately cast S% and I'll kind of go from this. Okay, good. It was an actual counter spell. So that's nice. Okay, I assume, yeah, I was going to say, I assume Lurus is dying now. But I'm still pretty okay with the way that turn went. Like we still got to go ahead and get value out of our friend Lurus. Not as much value as I would have liked. I'm waiting for a fifth turn, but I don't think holding Lurus in hand was the right play either against the Thoughtseize deck. I'm, I'm still pretty happy to get what value I could have out of Lurus. Okay, Renin 6. And unfortunately for us, Renin 6 can go ahead and kill Esper Sentinel. So that's not nothing, but I still have pretty good outs here. Like I have access to either Sigarda's Aid or Pure Steel Pal- well, not Pure Steel Paladin because I don't have Metalcraft. Ornithopter is not terrible. I don't know that I need to do anything else here, so I'm not going to. So if they attack into this, I can block. And then after blocking, I can go ahead and shoot it down with Iganjo. So that's an available route I have access to. So what happens here? So they have two cards. Is this just a Thought Seize? If so, I guess that takes out the hammer, which is annoying, but I can actually deal with a Thought Seize. Like, I'm already not doing too much with the hammer right now. That at least is all right. What are we doing here? Are you just like buying Lurus with your turn and passing? How many game actions are we taking right now? That is buying Lurus, but that's not passing. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it is passing. My bad. My bad. You're, you're not doing anything. Um, Stoneforge Mystic. Ooh. Um, so I can Stoneforge my way into... I can get the reality chip. I can get Shadow Spear. Oh, that's really good. You cost a lot to equip, but it's still really good. Uh, Shadow Spear is also pretty nice. I don't think it's what I want, though. I actually think I want to try the reality chip here. So pairing. how many times is that going to happen? Uh, power off. There. Do it on my own terms this time. And I can't equip it right now, so I'm not going to get to do the cool thing, you know? I think I'm still pretty happy with the option to do the cool thing next turn, because I can equip to one of my pro red creatures. And yeah, I think that's good enough. I don't think I want to play the land, play the hammer. No, they saw the land. Or have they seen the land? Yeah, they saw the land. Um, So there's not any of that going on. And I still don't think I want to cast the hammer. Um, Casting the hammer stops Sigarda's aid from being a good out off the top and I think I need to give myself that kind of out especially since we've already seen that our opponent is not necessarily willing but they have given us quite a few free turns last game and we just didn't draw the pure steel that we asked for I think we'll have they also see my ornithopter now okay I have ornithopter it flies doesn't do much else but it flies Ooh, excuse me all right we're gonna rinse some units that scalding turn for like the 47th turn which admittedly is a pretty cool line. Uh, do you have two of those? They have two of those. Okay. That's annoying. So now I'm just drawing Ornithopter for my turn. Boo. That sucks. All right. So we know we're drawing Ornithopter and we don't really have anything else to do. Which kind of stinks. Well, I'm going to play it. They know I have it. So there's no point in trying to hide it. But now that my Stoneforge Mystic is up, I can at least try to do something. I can gate the hammer in just in case our opponent um has like a thought seize ready so that's not nothing but we do need to draw some action like cobbling together one plus two has uh, been pretty hard here like they've got a lot of disruption they've got a lot of removal and stuff i was hoping that that um the reality chip was going to be able to do us some good there but 
it looks like we're just kind of uh twiddling our thumbs here which is not exactly where you want to be against this because we've already seen they have like some real haymakers like they have tybalt they just have goifs that are bigger than basically everything else we play um they've got the ren and six which is threatening ultimate in a couple of turns granted against sanctifier that's not so good but it still is a thing they have access to so what do we get a stoneforge mystic okay so i'm gonna get stoneforge mystic let's see if they counterspell it dress down I hate that card so much okay well that's awful so i'm not gonna get to look with lures they can dress down every turn so if they dress down during their own end steps then i'm just going to not really have much to do here and that stinks because i was definitely going to get lion sash so now my sanctifiers can die i think i'm actually just gonna pack it up here like we've got pretty much no way to win the game here so whatever gg to our opponent let's move to round four all right round four we got to reveal our friendo and our hand is uh it's a one lander but i actually think i'm still gonna keep this any one land turns this into really good i can play mem knight spring leaf drum cigar as aid have access to stoneforge mystic next turn yeah i actually kind of like this so let's go ahead and yield through the turn and see if that's what ends up panning out here. And I see Bobble, but no Lurus, so I guess I'm fighting Murktide Regents? I am fighting Murktide Regents, okay, okay. So the cool thing about this too- ooh, that's nice. It might actually be nicer than the, um, than the Cigarda's Aid right now. I like this a lot, All right? Few, shun, ha! Sick life us. All right, well, Rags can't get through a Mem Knight. They're never getting an attack through here unless they decide to play a bunch of stuff. And playing a bunch of stuff plays really nicely into my Esper Sentinel. So, um, yeah, not exactly complaining. I will happily block with a Mem Knight, jump in front. And if they just follow up with another Rags, then honestly, so be it. Like, okay, guess not. That's fine. Stoneforge Mystic, don't mind if I do. Let's go ahead and Ginger Brew. And I'm gonna do this first to see if they want to do anything. Okay, looks like no. So here I'm just going to attack with this and I guess this and I'm going to just go ahead and grab a land and with the land I'm just going to play the Cigar Aid. I don't think I need to walk Stoneforge into a counterspell. I don't necessarily like the idea of walking this into a counterspell. Doing it like this instead of doing Stoneforge Mystic allows me to not use the Springleaf Drum right now, which means that I can block a dash drags. Uh, so that's kind of the idea there. If they want to counterspell this, they still have to let me draw a card with Esper Sentinel too, so... Okay, so are you going to cast Counterspell? If so, I'll happily draw a card. Unholy Heat, uh, my friend. That's fine, I guess. So they did that, they paid the troll toll, and I don't have an equipment right now, which is medium unfortunate, but... They still gotta at least like try to be proactive here and I still have the Stoneforge Mystic. So let's see what this turn actually contains. Is it a bunch of nothing? I kinda hope so. A Mistress Bobble. I don't hate that. So here I can... I think I'm actually just gonna Bobble first. I guess I'd like to know a little more information here. So what do I have access to? It is not an equipment. Okay. The Saga's not bad though. So here I'm going to... I think just attack with Gingerbrood here? I still want to hold back for rags. I don't know that I necessarily want to cast Stoneforge Mystic into a pretty likely counterspell slash, slash Archmage's Charm. And if they tap out for like Murktide stuffs, then I know I have a Saga on top. I can Mystic for the Hammer and then Ink Moth Hammer next turn since I'll have four mana. So that's an available route. Um, what's this? A Bolt on my Ginger Brew. Yeah, all right. So we could be playing a little too scared of the counter spells here but so far it's not going poorly so they do have three cards in hand an ornithopter i think that's actually a pretty good draw that means that i probably don't actually need to do too much here with this i can just saga up ornithopter and then have access to ink moth nexus plus a possible um token on the next turn two uh draw two yeah okay so there's the archmage's charm we talked about earlier and they do have access to a bunch of cards here and they can play a murktide regent maybe with counterspell backup but if that's what they're gonna do here then i think i'm still mostly okay this might have been us taking a little bit too long here but they're gonna get a big old dragon and oh that's actively really good for us actually i think that means i can spend this mana doing stone forgy things if they want to counterspell they can cast counterspell and then i can just attack with both of these no i have to attack with these two and they have to block the memnite so they don't take anything but now they're staring down lethal i'm obviously pretty okay with this and pairing. how 
many times am I gonna do that? <laughs> Yo, I'm just gonna put like a little post-it note right on my monitor or something that says like, hey bro, stop doing that. Um <laughs> Oh, that's Definitely a non-zero number of times I've done that. Sanctifier is pretty good against the removal suite. Prismatic Ending is pretty good against Darcy and Rags. Things that I don't necessarily want against them include the Sash, the Chip. Both of those are relatively medium. Um, I mean, the Sash is like fine, but I don't think it's actively like super fantastic or anything. Paradise Mantle, I don't know that I necessarily want. And I guess Memnite's probably the worst creature here. It blocks Rags cleanly, which is really nice. I... oh, no. Ginger Brute's kind of bad. Um, I don't necessarily want the Ginger Brute, and I think taking out two Ornithopters is actually better than taking out two Memnites in specifically this matchup, um, because of the fact that Memnite trades so nicely with Rags, and they're gonna be on the play. So I actually think I like doing this against the Merc Tide deck. And minus one Sash, minus one Chip, minus one Mantle. Minus one Ginger Brute, minus two Thopters. So most of the threats fly anyway, like the Brazen Bowers, a leveled up Darcy, Murktide Regent. So Ornithopter being the attacking part of the win con, honestly, I don't know that it matters that much. But the fact that Memnite can block Rags and Ornithopter can't, well, at least profitably, I think makes it so that against this specific deck, that's probably a little better for us. And I actually am going to keep this. So here I've got... The Sentinel into two copies of Sigarda's Aid that plays around them bolting this and getting out of a card that gets around me saying, um, actually, you know what? No. What am I doing? Uh, I'm actually going to cast the Sigarda's Aid first. If they, like, I don't know, spell pierce that, then whatever. But what I wasn't considering when I said that the first time around is that I'll have the hammer already in hand to protect Esper Sentinel from, like, an unholy heat or a bolt or something. So they're basically going to have to, at the very minimum, use two removal spells and let me draw a card if they want to kill Esper Sentinel. And I think that's a pretty good route to go with. Um, a bauble. I actually like the bauble too. So let's play this. And I can just kind of like chill on doing the bauble thing. I want to save the bauble until I have a Pure Steel Paladin out because that gets me towards my Metalcraft. So that'll be nice. Okay. So let's see what they do here, if anything, really. And are they going to try to Unholy Heat, my friend? No, dang. I'm kind of hoping for like a super massive blowout, right? Like that's just got to be the wave. Have the opponent just ultra sad about everything for the entirety of life. What do I want to do here? Do I have a way to prevent them from... I don't think I have a way to prevent them from Archmage's Charming, my friend. So what I'm actually going to do here is just attack into the Archmage's Charm. I'm going to get to draw a card, so are they. But I'll be able to resolve a Pure Steel Paladin afterwards, so like that's nice. And uh, let's see what my opponent's cooking with here. Are you just an EOT unholy heat? Okay. So let's see if they paid a troll toll. They do. Now let's see what they have about this. That's my target. Please like gut shot so I can respawn with Shadow Spear. Um, <laughs> that would actually make my entire year, right? Just like ultra maximum blowout city. So can you do something about my Esper Sentinel becoming 11 power? Obviously, I hope not for the for the good guys here. It will be sad times if this was all like a ruse to get them to Archmage's Charm and steal a really big Esper Sentinel. Like that would suck pretty savage, right? So far, it's looking like we might get to do the thing. Oh, nope. We're not doing the thing. We are uh, not doing the thing. Okay, but I'm still pretty okay with that. Like we still got two removal spells out of their stuff. I am still potentially going to get to resolve a Pure Steel Paladin and put stuff on it. So like all certainly not lost. Now let's see what they come up with here. That is an Engineer Explosives X is 1. Well, won't say that doesn't suck. Now here, I think I actually do want to just use the bobble here since I'm not going to get to do the cool stuff with the Pierce of Paladin. Um, they have a bolt. Okay. Well, the lands are nice. So I can, I can buy Lurus. I can cast a Pure Steel Paladin now. Actually, I think that's the route I play with. I think I just want to cast a Pure Steel Paladin now. So later on when we start, you know, going all into the trenches and shit, it'll be... Not so bad to be able to buy Lurus with more mana. And then I can also like rebuy Colossus Hammer with that too. So that's not even all bad. And I do have the surprise Sigarda's Aid, which is clearly really nice. They have three card types. So if they want to just like unholy heat the Pure Steel Paladin and try to like get out of that, 
then I'm actually going to end up being okay. Uh, yeah, my nice things are dead. You got it. So they're going to get to resolve Merktide region if they want. Um, I will get to immediately untap with Sigarda's Aiden friends. Uh, expressive, annoying, but I can't do anything about that. Man, expressive is such a broke magic card. And that's a bolt. Yep, we saw that bolt earlier with the bobble, so we did know that was coming. So he, ooh, that's nice. I do enjoy that. So here I'm going to play the Sigarda's Aid first because I do want to be able to play around like, I don't know, a Spell Pierce or something. But the rest of this man is just going to go towards buying our friend Luris. So two, three, give me my friend and uh, your move, Yugi. So here we've got a bunch of options. Like I can use my turn two to have a construct. I have Shadow Spear in hand and that's going to be an instant speed thing. So that's pretty cool. Not so much in the face of a Merktide region, but everything else is all right. I've got a fifth land here, which is also pretty nice. A cigar is aid, not so nice. I don't really need to see a third one of those, but I'm going to be able to just kind of like chill here for a bit. Like I don't really need to press any buttons, so I'm simply not going to. Like I get to make two constructs, look for a hammer. I get to have the flooded strand. Are you just like drawing cards? Yeah, that's fine. Can't do much about you drawing cards. So they're all the way up to six cards in hand, which is clearly pretty good for them. What's this? You are a copy of Rags. Okay. Okay. There's a Saga. Let's grab a Hell of Fountain and put it in play tapped. You know, in case of Blood Moon, I should probably be looking for basic planes, but both of their fetches got not islands. Yeah, both of their fetches got not islands. So I actually don't think I need to worry about too much. So here I'm just going to make a construct. And if they have dress down, they have dress down. I'm at least going to give myself the chance to do good things. So I want, I think I just want a hammer here. Um, That plays way too nicely into a copy of, that does play way too nicely into a copy of dress down, but I don't know that I'm really beating a dress down. So let's try to cast prismatic ending here, get rid of rags see if I'm able to get away with an attack. And I expect this to be a dress down. It could just be a brazen borrower too, which is, I uh, worse has happened. I don't know why we didn't steal that at the beginning of combat though. Eh, I don't think it matters. Eh, never mind. It didn't matter. All right. So they've got the bobble. They've got things. They can attack me with 12. They're going to. Okay. I actually think I'm just going to let that slide for now. I go to seven. A pure seal paladin's a pretty good draw. A land isn't bad. Okay. Okay, so there's the island, which means that my next fetch probably should be considering Blood Moon. Um, Because if they're getting islands at this point, instead of just like tap steam vents or whatever, then there's dress down. So that sucks. Uh, mm. <laughs> Creatures lose all abilities. So I'm going to do this and then just like not search. That sucks. <laughs> and there's a big ass dragon too. Okay. Poor unfortunate souls. That's just me. All right, so you're getting a Merktide. I'm getting a Saga. Something tells me I don't win that race. So do we have a removal spell for my Stoneforge Mystic? Are you not killing my Stoneforge somehow? I think we meant to use that mana for explosives to kill my Stoneforge. I'm very confused as to why we would cast that at zero. They could have just cast that. Yeah, I think they just misclicked. Like they floated the mana first. So I'm pretty sure they wanted to use that mana for the explosives rather than trying to um, cast it at zero when the only thing that's, you know, is zero is on their side of the table. So that's, you know, there's no way that's actually what they meant to have happen here. Um, but I am going to get to do a relatively cool thing, right? So they go ahead, they attack, I block, etc., etc., And I go up to nine, I cry about it. But then I get to untap if they cast Merktide Regent and cast Luris. And the Luris is going to be able to... With this land drop here, rebuy me pure steel paladin. Nope, I'm a liar face. They're just not doing that. So honestly, smart on them, clearly. So if they have a counter spell, then they have a counter spell and I can't beat it anyway. But I'm gonna give myself the chance to resolve this. Boo! So many copies of dress down. That card is seriously just like the bane of my Whoa, 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 what 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 the what the huh? Oh my Lanta, it's doing the thing. Thanks, Moto. So it does this thing every now and then where it just like breaks and decides to replay the entire game like you're seeing here oh my god this program is so glitchy sometimes so oh what the h all right so i guess i'll just wait for this to do the thing and we're almost back at the current turn okay god i hate this program um <laughs> yeah so here's the lovely error message and i'm actually going to 
take a screenshot of this thing too. So yeah, sorry, Magic Online has encountered an error. The system will attempt to replay its last known stable state and retry the last action. If the replay is unsuccessful, a new game will be started. Oh, quality programs, yeah, quality programs. I, yeah, my opponent just goes, what happened, lol? <laughs> so I told him, like, you know, quality program is quality. I, uh, I know about as much as you do, opponent. I'm sorry. Oh my God. <laughs> It's so bad. <sighs> yeah, opponent just goes, yes, I know. Yeah. So they won that game. Um, They were winning pretty hard. I actually will concede and move to game three. So I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and slide into game three on the play. What do I want to change, if anything, here? I will. I kind of want to slide out one of these on the draw and put my friend reality chip back in. If these games are going to go a little bit longer, I do like the ability to play cards off the top of my deck. Um, and our hand is, uh, hmm. Um, I have this, 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 and I need a land for this to do much else. But I also really like the idea of just having Esper Sentinel instead. Um, I actually am going to keep this. A single land makes his hand go from, like, fine to pretty damn good. Yeah, I like that. And then if I can just get, like, Sanctifier in or anything else, then I'm generally pretty happy with that as well. But for now, just the idea of like Memnite into Esper Sentinel into stuff, I don't necessarily hate the idea of that doing like the thing. Let's go ahead, draw land. Obviously, I'm super hoping my opponent just has like a spell. If they just cast like a Darcy or a Rags, then this plan's a little bit worse. But even then, I can still just resolve a Sigarda's aid by itself, assuming no um, land is drawn. So let's yield through this turn and see if that ends up being exactly what happens here and this is gonna be one of those hands where i actually think i like the option of the reality chip more than i like the option of having like just a second sanctifier and vec in hand too so that part's already feeling like pretty decent because if i draw a land this hand here isn't necessarily guaranteed to like go longer due to too much uh mishra's bobble and i assume they're gonna pay the troll toll with the island that's fine uh that technically does something Okay, so I'm going to do this and I'm going to hold back Memnite because the second land could just be a dash drags. And I don't really know that I need to play into that. Like, I don't think the one damage is necessarily worth the, um, yeah, I don't think the one damage is worth letting a, a rags get through. So I'll just skip out on the one damage for now. And let's see what this is. Ooh, that's nice. All right. Well, I'm going to, uh, turn my friends sideways now because I think they actually do have to respect the, um, I think they actually have to like respect the spell now. And if they fetch, I'm just going to get to gate in the Colossus Hammer basically whenever I feel like. So let's see if they fetch. Uh, they bobble. Okay. So if this is like a spell pierce, then opponent, you got me. If that's a spell pierce, you got me. But I'm going to go ahead and put this on the Esper Sentinel now uh, before they have access to red mana. Let's do that. So now every non-creature spell is like basically. So if this is just going to be like an Abraid, then yeah, look at that, like 11 mana. No, give me a card. Wahahaha. Oh, okay. So opponent just thanked me for conceding game two. And yeah, you know, like, like it's, it's a league. Like, you know, is it really worth like being medium scum in a league? I mean, to be fair, I wasn't guaranteed to lose that game, but I was losing pretty hard. So I don't necessarily mind conceding that game. And um, I guess we got rewarded by hitting the land on our turn three here. So like, this is looking okay. So they can still just have like an abrade for Esper Sentinel and be pretty okay with me drawing a card. Granted, we know that I have Pure Steel Paladin in hand to be able to like do the cool things, but for now, an 11-11 Esper Sentinel is not exactly the, you know, the most sad time scenario anybody's ever had. And even like, a, yeah, I was gonna say, even like a Merktide region just like isn't a real defense against what I have going on. So all things considered, this isn't bad. And what do we have to play with here? Like they can Brazen Bower, like, I don't know, like this and kill it with a spell or something. Like that's a route they have access to. They are stealing the Sentinel itself. Okay, so I'm going to get to draw a card. It's a Springleaf Drum. Okay, so they get to do that. Now I'm going to get to resolve my Pure Steel Paladin, play Mishra's Bauble. Yeah, I can't do anything about that. And I still control this, so I'm going to get to slide it. So even though I don't control the Esper Sentinel, I still control the Colossus Hammer the whole time. So they were never in a position where they could stop me from um, being able to just re-equip the Colossus Hammer as I choose. So that part's pretty nice. 
definitely something to to know in games if we are in the middle of you know trying to figure stuff out so let's see if they block if they block i'm not going to equip the colossus hammer to the paladin if they do block i'm sorry if they do block i'm not sliding if they did not block then i was going to slide and the reason for that is because this is still going to take a damage so if i move the colossus hammer over to the piesto paladin then my memnite will have taken a damage and without the 10 10 bonus it's going to be a 1 1 with one damage on it so the memnite will die if i do that but if they don't block then i'll be pretty happy to slide the hammer over to the paladin and go from there so let's see if they're willing to go down to three so they are not willing to go down to three which means my memnite is going to keep the colossus hammer and stay alive nope we're waiting on them to make a decision okay so we finally get a confirmed block so we're just going to let them sacrifice our esper sentinel to the attack here and they're still looking at kind of a lot here like they can um Archmage's Charm and Memnite, they can just like, I don't know, cast a big ass Merktide Regent and maybe abrade the Memnite. They they have, or abrade the Colossus Hammer, I don't think they should be abrading the Memnite, right? Uh, there's, there's a lot of things they have access to here. So let's see what they choose to do. They are Prismari Commanding. That's, wasn't on my bingo card, but that is very cool. All right, do we get a land? We do get a land. I like, I like. So things I can do, I can... Sanctifier and Vac. Yeah, that's what we're doing. So I can cast Sanctifier and the pro red on that is clearly going to end up being pretty damn good. I can also cast this Springleaf Drum and Springleaf Drum will give me the mana to equip this Colossus Hammer at instant speed and untap pretty well. So I'm pretty happy about that. And do I need to use this bobble? I don't know that I need to, but I think it's not bad. Um, I don't mind. It, okay, it's a bolt. Well, Bolt is relatively useless here, which is nice. If they fetch, then I will be able to do this now. I don't know what this plays around, but I have the option to play around it. So I'm going to. And yeah, I don't really know what they could have for like one blue mana slash one red mana. But I like knowing that I have the option to play around it. Um, I Ganjo doesn't really do too much for me. A land drop is still just like not terrible. I don't know that this is uh, the worst thing. Ever. So expressive iteration is clearly not bad from them. Um, what do I? Have? What all do I have access to? So I'm gonna have five total mana sources next turn, including Springleaf Drum. So one thing I can do here is flash in the Reality Chip to. Oh, oh man, I have a lot of sweet routes. So assuming I draw like no other cool cards here, right? I can play Iganjo as my fourth land. I'll be pretty excited about that. I also can flash into Reality Chip because it's a creature, but it's also still just an equipment. So I can play it at instant speed with Sigarda's Aid. I can use Reality Chip with Springleaf Drum. Uh, no, I can't. Wait, aren't you just, yeah, that's 12. All right. So if I draw any equipment, so we don't get to do that, but I get to just like dome you for 12 and tell you good luck. Yeah, go to one. And I can't cast my reality chip, but like, am I even that sad about that? I think the answer is no. So I'm just going to buy Lurus with the man that I have and pass. Opponent, you have to have exactly a big ass Murktide Regent just to live, I think. They could also have what? Dress down plus Prismari command to destroy this and deal damage here. But they have to have both another Prismari command and a dress down in hand right now just to get away with that. And expressive iteration is none of those things. So yeah, it's looking like they're just casting a copy of um expressive iteration to like maybe look for a Murktide Regent, which is the only creature they have that can block this thing. They can have cute things like Pyra or like Aether Spell Bomb, I Yes, but they're not a saga deck, so they don't look for that. They could play something like Brazen Borrower to bounce my Sanctifier, Murktide Regent to block. Running really low on the list of things here. <laughs> like, this is uh, not exactly an exhaustive list. And all of that's assuming that I don't just, like, draw another threat off the top of my deck that I can cast, right? Like, any zero drop works, a Stoneforge Mystic works. Um, like, I've got a lot of things that I can draw as well. But let's see what they have here. Uh, three mana does what for you? Because, like, a Prismari Command on Colossus Hammer by itself doesn't do anything. If this is, like, just a Murktide leaving up red mana, then sincerely don't care. So this is just going to look like a Burktide region to block, and I'm clearly really cool with that. And even that's assuming that I don't just, like, draw a Shadow Spear off the top or a Stoneforge to get Shadow Spear. So, like, that plays too. Sigarda's Aid doesn't really have much text here, but that's okay. 
Um, yeah, we're just gonna make this your problem. Beep beep ho block. <laughs> All right. So I don't think they have a way to like. Okay, good. I was gonna say I don't think they have a way in their deck to be able to for one mana get rid of Colossus Hammer. If they did, then that might have sucked. Um, Flooded Strand says that I might have had to look out for something like a I guess a wear and tear, but. I don't even know that that was really ever a concern. So what do I do here? I think I don't bother playing the Iganjo. No, no, no. I don't bother playing the Iganjo. So playing the Iganjo takes me away from being able to just using Iganjo's channel ability to kill in attacking rags, which attacking rags with a treasure token to pull my prismatic ending is an out to Sanctifier. So I don't think I need to give them that out. Um... End step. Dress down? Are we just casting dress down at end step? I guess that's one route you have. Sure, you can cast a dress down. So let's see what they draw with dress down. Do they actually have... I mean, if they dress down and... Oh, they just have two unholy heats. Okay, well, that's pretty obnoxious. And I don't have another equipment to flash in, so that actually kind of sucks. All right. So now I just do need another creature now. Oh, Ornithopter. That's a creature. Um, so are we counterspelling Ornithopter? We're not. So that's good. So I'll be able to go ahead and put the reality chip into play since I have the blue mana. Oh, you know what? Even better. I should actually just use it to cast Lurus. Um, yeah, you know what? That was actually a mistake on my part. That was definitely a mistake. So let's... Oh, oh right, 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 right. Duck, it's a creature, so it doesn't get to do anything. Okay. I was like, where's my card on top of my deck? But no, I don't get to see that. Um, Pure Steel Paladin, since this is an 0-4, the reality ship, I should actually just be able to tap for white to do the thing just fine. Um, so this might actually just be like a resolved Pure Steel Paladin, which is nice. Um, they do have dashed rags, which is pretty annoying. Um, this might be the one I have to, oh, this is legendary. Oh my God, it's legendary. Let's go. <laughs> it's legendary. <laughs> oh, I didn't even realize this thing was legendary. So I can just use Iganjo anyway. Oh my God. That's so good. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh, never mind. I was just thinking like, man, I have to like let the rags hit because this is likely a lightning bolt in hand. I don't want to take damage here. And no, I don't have to worry about any of that because I got only costed two with my legendary creature on the table. Oh, that is so absurd. Um, so here I can, oof, the two blue mana is clearly still something, right? But I think what I want to do is, yeah, I think I'm just going to cast a pierce to a paladin, right? Like this is clearly like just some kind of bolt or something, but I don't really know that I'm going to get out of this. So I'm just going to put hammer here first. And if they have a response to the killing Pierce to Paladin, then they still have to deal with the reality chip. But now I still have a giant reality chip. So even though I didn't get to do like the cool thing TM with the Pierce Seal Paladin, like you still got to respect this. So maybe them being at one with my reality chip is good enough. Like this is a big threat. And even two dress downs doesn't solve this. So they might just like be casting a Merktide region to block again. I obviously like that option. Uh, cast where X is one. Okay, sure. So they're going to do that. Blow up all my cool shit. I'm sad about that, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, but even this still isn't that bad because like Memnite's going to be in play now and Memnite's going to get to have the reality ship equipped to it. Wait, that costs a blue, doesn't it? So I don't get to do that. Uh, so I guess I just do this then two in a blue so I don't actually get to do that boo uh all right I lied I don't get to do the thing now what so flooded strand is a terrible draw for me a uh, memnite is good enough though like if they don't if they only have two cards so if oh uh, never mind I was gonna say so if one of those cards isn't a removal spell then I'm actually oh oh well that plays I will take a hammer on top that's nice so let's see if this is something that's not named a uh what unholy heat sucks murktide region's fine uh brazen borrower kind of sucks actually brazen borrower sucks a lot because i can't just recast reality ship a counter spell's pretty obnoxious so like a murktide region just like on blocking duty i'm actually pretty okay with that so that's kind of okay if their turn is just like murktide regent land tapped i'd love that but i uh... and esper sentinel is also really good so let's see what they have here so I'm going to attack. I'm going to cast it. Got something to say about it? Are we a counterspell? Hey, we get there. Sweet. So even with uh, 
magic just absolutely breaking and being hilarious. Uh, yeah, we still pull it out over Murktide, so let's move on to round five. All right, fifth and final round, we got Luris against <laughs> you, Mad. Well, opponent, I uh, hate to disappoint, but I'm currently not mad. This hand is like I can Paradise Mantle, Ornithopter, equip both of those things. I have a Stoneforge Mystic, um, which means that what? If I play the Ink Moth Nexus, Stoneforge Mystic, Paradise Mantle, I can have a max of four mana next turn. Like that's kind of a lot. Can I just not count? No, that's only three. Um, I, yeah, I just can't count. Don't mind me. And what does three mana really get? Ketria Triumph. So it looks like we're playing against either Blink or some kind of Cascade shenanigans, something of that sort. So let's Ornithopter, Paradise Mantle. Um, I actually want to hold the Mishra's Bauble in case I Stoneforge Mystic and then I end up drawing a copy of what? Pure Steel Paladin, I guess? So I'm going to play the Planes and just equip it and pass there. So in case my card for turn ends up being like or in case um, one of my draws ends up being a pure steel paladin, I guess I'm pretty okay with this, but they put this in with damage against hammer. So they're clearly playing something right. What's the something? I, we don't know. Is it fire or ice? Are we casting fire slash ice? Fire or ice? Either fire or ice is okay. Petty theft. That was petty. Okay, so we're playing against um, rhinos, looks like. And a lion sash. I don't want it, but it's cool. Um, <laughs> so let's see, I can, is there any reason to just put this on the table? Like, it's not like their living end. No, I'm just going to resolve this. So here I will get, I could just get a hammer and put the fear of God in them. I actually like that. I'm just going to get a, uh, oh, did I just do that backwards? I did. I was supposed to equip first. Oops. Oh, well, whatever. Those are the things we've done. So let's see this. Nope. I don't know you. Counter activator to trigger ability or create a token that's a copy of target creature you control. Okay, so it stifles or it's a sorcery speed. All right, well, I guess a W in the chat for stifles in modern. And that's for Sentinel. That's not bad. Um, Here I want to, I guess just grab a basic. Yeah, basic. We are casting the stifle, I assume. It's actually kind of sick if that's exactly what they're doing with their whole turn here. Please do that. No, use the stifle, use the stifle. I'm not even doing anything. Come on, it's just an unassuming flooded strand. I actually, because I have two more lands in hand, so like I really just do not care about the stifle. Like I've got Paradise Mantle, I've got tons of mana. So if they're going to try to mana deny me with a stifle, I'm actually pretty happy about that. So please do that. <laughs> uh, you can hope. So let's go ahead and I guess cast Colossus Hammer. And okay, so what is this? What are we doing about Esper Sentinel? Are we casting Rhinos in response? We are casting Rhinos in response. Okay, so not much I can do about that. Um, I was really hoping that they would have um, the stupid thing so that they were a lot less likely to... All right, so now I would like either a Sigarda's Aid or a Pure Steel Paladin so that we can just wing with Ink Moth Nexus. As it stands, I'm going to 11. Not the biggest fan of that, but Lion Sash can also just like be bigger than a Rhino soon too, so that's nice. And uh, that's the shit I don't like. I definitely did not want that to be a thing that happened. So let's grab another planes and oof, we can't even really attack either. So we uh, might be SOL here. I've got four white mana, which can turn Lion Sash into a by five. So that's a thing, but it's not a pretty thing. So if they just cast the Brazen Bower here, um, yeah, I think we're just dying here. I, I don't think we make it out of this. That's a lot of power and toughness, and I can do next to nothing about it. So let's exile all the specifically permanent cards here. Uh, I do need to do that, though. And ugh, yucky. Are we paying the troll toll? You're also paying the troll toll. What a jerk. All right. So that's a lot of rhinos, and I uh, don't really have a lot to say about those things. So what happens here? I can block three of the 12 damage that will be coming through from these, and that's... Uh, nine so i can go to one all right well let's go to one i guess not happy about it uh ba -ba, block one block one and since they trample the damage like what direction the damage goes in doesn't necessarily matter too much the f i still just go to one no matter how i block so let's see if this is just like a bone crusher giant for damage to my face it looks like the answer is negative we nope we're a bobble so yeah game two boo so things i want against rhino 
Uh, I think it's just the spell pierces, actually. Um, the rest of the stuff, honestly, pretty irrelevant for the most part. So I don't want Sash. I don't want Reality Chip. And I don't really know that I want four mem or three Mem Knights. But the rest of this is fine. So let's do we want pierces. We don't want Sash. We don't really want Chip. And we don't want all of the Mem Knights. I still like some number of Mem Knights on the play. It's not necessarily the best card against a deck that's just able to do things like force of vigoring and whatnot so let's do this to start and our hand's actually not bad so we've got a spell pierce a stone forge mystic and urza saga spell bomb isn't even bad um i would obviously have preferred a much faster hand here but all things considered i'll, I'll take this so if this hand can come up with a what a saga or a like a saga or a copy of or not a saga cigar is aid the other s word um if it can come up with cigar aid or a pure steel paladin then i'll still be pretty excited to have access to all my cool things right so hey there's a cool thing thanks that's what i asked for it's so nice when your deck knows exactly what you want for christmas um so that's kind of cool and here i'll get to cast stone forge mystic get a hammer and fucking f all right um well that sucks so what did they get they pitched foothills to do that okay big giant f uh s percent is not bad though so let's start there and this way i get to hold up spell pierce so that if next turn they start trying to do rhino -y shit to me then i do have some defense against that if they're looking to cast a two mana spell to kill Esper Sentinel, I'll get to draw a card. Um, and if they're just casting like a dead gone, then I'm fine with that too. But the spell pierce is going to be really nice for defense. So what's this? A Charlotte's Agent. Okay. So I'm going to get to draw a card and spell pierce the thing, which is pretty nice. So give me my card. Fuck your card. But you can have a 2-2. Two -two. So I'm going to get to... Ooh. So I'm going to get a hammer. And I am going to cast this. Like, I'm fully aware that they could have just had like a copy of... Um, Oh, what am I thinking? A copy of Force of Negation there. But all things considered, I'm pretty okay with the way this is going. And if they want to just like Force of Vigor my Colossus Hammer and stuff, then I'm even mostly okay-ish with that because I do have another Stone Forge in hand. So like even that's not so bad. Another Sentinel is pretty good too. Um, Let's start there. So yes, I'm going to pay to life. And I'm actually going to start with the Stone Forge. So... I'm just going to I'm just going to make them respect like all of this. And if they have a copy of Force of Vigor, I can respond to the Force of Vigor by putting in one of the hammers. And if they are going to Yeah, this is this is fine against most of their plans. I like this against most plans they could have access to. Force of Negation sucks, and honestly Force of Vigor isn't much better for me. For what it is, I will shut up and take it, I guess. So what's this? Um, we are Brazen Borrowing. Oh no, we're just casting a Brazen Borrower. Like it's literally just casting a Brazen Borrower, the card. So let's see if they, nope. Okay. This way, I'm at least more able to guarantee that I get access to a card if they want to like defend themselves by casting stuff. And if they do like have something like a Force of Vigor now to shut down the Esper Sentinel, honestly, so be it. But for now, I'll just take my chunk of three and call it a day. Okay still not happy about the idea of a force of vigor this is uh so far not just the worst for me so what i can do is fire this up attack with these two and that's good enough oh crap 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 stop, stop. <laughs> oh my god that almost sucked thank you opponent for taking a while oh man that almost was not great so let's make them respect this and if this is a force in the, uh, force of vigor then honestly i'm pretty good here so I'm just going to attack with these two. Stoneforge Mystic can use its ability to gate into the Colossus Hammer. So that part's pretty nice. Um, we are casting another Brazen Bower. Okay, so if that's just going to block the Ink Moth Nexus, then I'm actually, I think I'm actually just okay with putting the Hammer into play and letting them waste that, right? But if they don't block the Esper Sentinel, then, oh, they do, okay. And I'm going to do it with the Stoneforge so that we don't walk into a um, copy of Force of Negation. Like, I don't need to walk into counter spells, so I'm just not going to. So that way, they're stuck being on chump block duty. I've got a bunch of creatures in play. Life is okay. And I do still need a Pure Steel Paladin to make use of this Colossus Hammer. But this is still... Theory is actually okay. Like, they can go ahead and kill two of my creatures, like my Stoneforges. Or, what, my Esper Sentinel plus something else. But... 
all things considered, this is still fine. Like, they still have to block the Esper Sentinel with Fury, and that's not anywhere near enough damage to really withstand what I'm doing here. So if they just want to, like, kill my Stoneforge and Stoneforge, I'm okay with it. And since I know they only have one card in hand, um, yeah. So, oh, they're still attacking. Okay. So I'm going to go to 11. So let's see what I draw. That's not bad. I would like to draw a bobble. They are drawing a Scalding Tarn. Okay. Um, unfortunate opponent. So I'm going to buy Luris now since they know I don't have any cards in hand. Here I can just attack. Yeah. I'm pretty sure they just kind of like have to block here. Like I still have my Ink Moth Nexus to chill on defense here. I have the threat of Luris coming in. Like I've got a couple of blockers in Stoneforge Mystic. So I actually think there's a little bit of a... Uh, Great. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That's nice. That is on the list of things I asked for. And I will definitely be blocking with um, Stoneforge Mystic here. So let's... I think I also block with Ink Moth Nexus. I just don't want to give them any chances to be able to participate in this game. And even though I have Luris, I think I'm okay with doing this. Yeah, because if I do it like this, we're still in... Opponent has close to no win cons and i do have win cons so i just don't really think i need to play this game with them you know and the charlotte's agent into rhinos was pretty good is that all other footfalls we see one we see two no they just conceded it never mind they're just off it all right well i mean i'll take it whatever game three i think that was a little early i'm clearly cool with that but i think it was just a little premature there so let's go ahead reveal our friend luris and we have Ooh, double saga? Uh, I don't think we can keep this. This is really bad against a single blood moon effect. Oh, that's a lot better. That's loads better. So this is a turn three win with the Nexus. Um, so I'm going to keep this and I ship flooded strand, I guess. Yeah, zero, zero, cigar aid, hammer, do this thing. Yeah. All right. Like this is a pretty stable turn three hand. So let's go ahead here and oh, we're casting something now. Oh, no, we're not. Okay, I'm like, are you just suspending a Rhinos? Okay, so let's walk ourselves into a lovely Force of Vigor. Oh, you know what? That means I should have kept the Hallowed Fountain. Duh. Should have kept the Hallowed Fountain. Um, Because if I draw a Spell Pierce now, I'm not going to be able to use it. I think not really playing to that. We might have been just more correct to not just like try to bum rush it. All right, let's see what two cards I get here. And if they force a vigor this, then honestly, like, because now they, they're they not going to get to force a vigor and, oh, oh, damn it. I drew the spell pierce. No, <laughs> uh, we're so bad at this. We're so bad at this. Oh my God. Oh, oh what did I just say? Oh, life is hilarious. All right, well, I guess we can try to turn to him. Uh, do the attacks, I guess. And I am going to try to uh, do the one. So let's see if this is like a damage spell. If it's a damage spell, then we just kind of like went on the spot, right? So I'm going to Ornithopter with that one. Yes. And I'm just not going to do anything else. Because if this is another, if this is like some kind of damage spell, or even if they like Petty Theft, Force of Vigor on those. Okay. So I get to respond with the Force of Vigor by doing this. And this means that I still have access to um obviously like still just a really big clock in the 11 11 but i still have my ornithopter i what's this a petty theft it is all right okay and even that's not so bad right like they're relatively low on resources i still get to actually they can just cast the rhinos and i'm pretty sad about that oh they have fury well that sucks too so fury into a cascader sucks really bad please don't have that oh no <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck my life right all right so we just had the run perfects shit oh time to cuss oh my god these bell pierce would have been so good and i cut myself off of it oh we're so bad all right well i'm taking 10 and what do i even draw to get out of this now i think the answer is nothing yeah i don't think i have a reasonable out of any sort like they can just flash and brazen bow or untap kill me and if this had been the hallowed fountain then i had the out in hand like i drew the spell pierce so this is uh yeah this is a thrown game we uh we fucked up <laughs> that sucks oh man what can i do here um obviously that's the brazen bar and i really can't do shit about that do i have a way to live no so if i fire up ink mop nexus block this block two of these 10 damages here i go down to two and still basically have nothing so yeah all right well we threw that sucks um so Let's go over the list and I guess some thoughts here. And uh, 
for what it's worth, I do actually like the way this list was constructed. I actively like the blue stuff in here. And we saw a lot of it come up, right? Like the spell pierces were pretty good. We saw the thieving skydiver in the mirror um, back in round one. So that was kind of cool. The reality chip was uh, pretty sweet, not going to lie. Um, it being legendary came up with that case of Igonjo versus Rags. It being a 0-4 came up where they couldn't kill it with just like lightning bolts, which our Murktide region opponent did end up having. Aether Spell Bomb is something that will come up every now and then against cards like Murktide Regent, which we faced. And I, I think I, I like it overall, right? Like Hammer Time's just a really strong, good, powerful deck, and there's really no way of getting around saying it. It's just a ridiculously strong deck. So if this is kind of like your cup of tea where you have, you know, one plus one equals two and your opponent's just dead, then that's pretty cool. But sometimes your math has to be really complicated. Like you have to one plus one equals ten ten. And that's also something that's pretty sweet. So I like the fact that this has both a really low floor for getting into, but also a pretty high ceiling as far as things go. And I think some things that I might change about the deck maybe include not playing Lion Slash, uh, not Lion Sash, not Lion Slash, uh, Lion Sash in the main. I do like the card. I don't know that I like it in the main. Oh God, Lion Sash in the main. Whoops. Um hairline excused so dad jokes are present we got those but i do like what happened here otherwise right like the paradise mantle wasn't so bad being able to equip it onto ornithopter on turn one and then have turn two with three mana without having to cast bring leaf drum is pretty sweet because that works a little better with your esper sentinels i guess so like that part's kind of cool casting it for zero off the top of the deck with the reality chips kind of sweet so like that's an option and yeah i think the only real thing i would change about this would be to just like not really Really include the one of Lion Sash in the main. I might play like a second reality chip, maybe something else here in this one drop spot to go to Urza Saga package. Just, I don't know, like not this. Like when we did see it, it was relatively underwhelming and obviously it wasn't in a graveyard matchup, but it was still like meh. I don't know that we need the third Sanctifier. It is still pretty good, right? Like we played against Murktide. It is really good against Death Shadow and Death Shadow is usually the best deck in the format right now. So if we were to play against Death Shadow, I'd probably be a lot higher on the Sanctifiers. I don't know. Three might be uh, one too many. I definitely want at least two. For now, I think I would stick with three. I don't know. I'd have to give a lot more consideration and a lot more reps than like five to really make that final choice, you know. It being immune to a lot of removal is really, really nice too. So I did enjoy that. But yeah, overall thoughts. I like it. Deck was fun. I would play it again. And um, I would recommend this to y'all. So that's going to be the end of today's video. Thanks so much for sticking around, watching the gameplay, having fun with me today. As always, if you like what you're watching, just make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, and I will see y'all on the next one.